it's the best and worst of last gen, reminiscing about the last generation of consoles as we move into the new one. Best. Achievements on the Xbox 360, as well as trophies on the PlayStation 3. Something that not a lot of gamers could really wrap their heads around at first, achievement points as well as trophies certainly became a very large part and an ingrained part of the last console's generation experience. The ability to rack up a gamer score per se, or a trophy amount, whether you had an Xbox or a PlayStation, was really a unique factor and added for the very first time unique replayability to the games that you purchased for these consoles. Now, in previous console generations, the similar kind of things, the completionist kind of atmosphere existed as well, but it wasn't official. It was more of like, oh, on somewhere on an obscure online message board, someone attempted to get every collectible in Ratchet and Clank, and they did it. Woo -doo -hoo -doo -hoo, who cares? Now, you could have visibly share with your friends and anyone online whether or not you completed these additional optional objectives and it really was cool because for those who wanted to explore achievements you could and others could completely ignore them and only you know experience the mainstream version of the game that you were playing so it was really neat obviously some people took it to the extreme, trying to basically buy the games and, and find exploits to find the easiest ways to get high achievement points and or trophy rankings. And it does get out of hand when people take things like this that really aren't meant to be competitive and they turn it into something competitive. But for the most part, it was a fun addition. It was a cool feeling to hear that sound effect that plays, that on-screen prompt when you get a new reward for doing something awesome in a game. Pretty cool new addition to consoles that stuck with the next generation as well. Worst, the dawn of the rage quitter. So as we previously said, this last console generation was really the first one to have robust, complex, and competitive online gameplay. And with that, unfortunately, some people start to take things way too seriously. Now, I already mentioned cheating in online gameplay, but what I really need to highlight here is how widespread of an issue rage quitting became, especially with competitive fighting games online. It's just so annoying to be playing through an online matchup, especially if it's a really close one, to be on the verge of possibly winning a match just to see the game suddenly lock up, an error message pop up saying that your opponent has left the match, see the game reset back to the menu. And the thing is, unfortunately, a lot of game developers, at least in the early stages of this last console generation, didn't account for people who would try to do this repeatedly over and over every time they were about to lose to try to retain their online ranking status. And so some games never even punished people for rage quitting. In addition to that, some games unfairly punished both players, even the player who was about to win the match for rage quitting, lowering everyone's ranking collectively. So rage quitting just simply became a huge trollish kind of deal with the internet. Now admittedly people started to get people back for it because when the dawn of YouTube happened and everyone started recording their gameplay and uploading those competitive matches to YouTube some people really got blown up when it shows that they were the idiots who were rage quitting on a regular basis and a lot of people just derided them and were able to avoid them altogether in fact rage quitting became such a large phenomenon in the last console generation that a lot of games actually ended up putting in extra features in order to try to bypass it or make it so that you don't have to play people who've shown as rage quitting for a certain percentage in other cases it actually shows you the percentage of games the person has rage quit so if you see that it happens a lot you don't play them during the matchmaking screen so Again, with a new generation came new problems. Rage quitting was a huge dilemma. At this point, it's unsure whether or not there is a definitive way to end it, but at least the game developers are trying to find ways around it. All right, this is it. Up next, it's the final installment of the best and worst of the last console generation. What's it gonna be? What's gonna be the final things to make the list? Find out.